Hey there, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd. Today I had planned to take you on a tour of all the basil varieties that I'm growing, but something came up and now the subject is going to be about basil downy mildew, which has just appeared on my garden basil plants. So first though, I want to say this video is being sponsored by Vigo Gardens. I'm out here at my Vigo garden right now. I put this garden together in an, in an entirely different video. You can watch that video to learn how it all was assembled. Uh, this is my second season in my Vigo garden and I'm enjoying it very well. My tomatoes did great this year. I have green onions going gangbusters over there and I planted my basil which has done very well and I've harvested from it but something just came up, this basil downy mildew. So let's talk about that. First of all, what is basil downy mildew? It is technically a water mold, not a fungus, even though it has the word mildew in the title. The idea is that it is an, uh, something that is either seed borne or it shows up on plants that you bring home from the nursery or you can buy some basil at the store and bring it home and it can end up if you compost it it can end up in your garden soil what does it look like let's take a look you can see that it looks green on the top and everything looks fine uh, but sometimes you'll start to see a yellowing on the tops of the leaves or sometimes you'll see some some a little brown spots starting to form on the tops of the leaves but it's really when you flip it over that you start to see the real damage. It's this gray slash black mold that's growing on all the undersides of the leaves. And it's so sad because it looks so great from the top. And then you flip it over and it's like, oh, sad. So it spreads, it's spores, so it spreads. So what you want to do to take care of it is take off all the affected leaves, if you can, and don't leave them lying around in the bed or throw them in the compost bin. You wanna put them in the green bin where they're going to get composted at 160 degrees-ish. Uh, that's gonna kill off any of the pathogens. Then keep, you know, try and, try and pinch it so that it sends out some new growth. Basil downy mildew shows up in moist, humid situations. Now we just had a hurricane, our very first, come through here in Southern California and that was the thing that triggered this mildew. It wasn't here before, it's here now because we had three inches of rain and temperatures in the 80s at the same time. So that happens. So uh, once things cool down, if your basil is still growing, it may develop new leaves that don't have the downy mildew. So it's worth pinching off all of those uh, leaves that are affected. The common recommended treatment for basil downy mildew is copper fungicide. And I'm gonna tell you two reasons why I don't think you should use it. First of all, uh, I don't like to spray anything that is a leaf that I'm planning to ingest with copper fungicide or really any kind of spray, even organic. Um, you know, tomatoes, if you're spraying the leaves, it's one thing. If you're spraying the tomato itself, that's another leaves like basil and kale and lettuces and things, I'm going to ingest that so I don't like to spray that with any kind of pesticide, even organic. And the second reason why I don't recommend copper fungicide is because copper fungicide builds up in soils and eventually starts to bind up nutrients and keep them away from plants. So the plants are unable to uh, process nutrients from the soil and grow. So you might start to see a buildup of copper in your soil and stunted growth. So those are my two reasons for not using copper fungicide. If you are desperate and you know it's a last resort, go ahead and use it. But uh, instead, I have another thing to offer, and that is to grow downy mildew resistant varieties. I have two that are growing over here. Uh, first, let me just give you a quick tour of everything that's growing here, and then we'll get to the, the uh, resistant varieties in a second. I, I want to say I still love these varieties. I have nothing against them even though they are susceptible to basil downy mildew. But the first one here is Italian Cameo. The next one is Aurelia. And then there's good old Genovese. Now all three of these are Genovese type basil varieties. So they're kind of fun. I've had some others growing here too, but these are the most prominent ones that have done the best in my garden. Now let's talk about the basil downy mildew variety resistant varieties. Here, Rutgers Devotion and Rutgers Obsession. Rutgers Devotion I have grown before and I swear from one plant I made enough pesto to last an entire year. I, I froze I think 10 to 12 jars of pesto 
and I'm still using it a, a summer later. So it's really prolific. These plants are very small right now. I had some army worms find them. I just pulled two army worms off this morning and I'm sure there are more, so I'm inspecting in the mornings. But these I also planted late in the season and they're just starting to take off. So these are your tried and true options. Now, what I love about Rutgers Obsession and Rutgers Devotion is that they are open pollinated, which means you can save the seeds from them and grow them out year after year. They have been naturally bred to be basil downy mildew resistant. There are a couple of hybrid varieties available too that are resistant. You can look for those in your seed catalogs and try those if you're in an area that gets hot, humid weather. Uh, that's gonna be your best bet. Uh, so I hope this helps you get through your basil downy mildew woes. I'm certainly going to be pruning all of this once we're done here. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. You'll find a ton more information on GardenNerd.com and in my books, Gardening for Geeks, Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden, and my novel, Garden Variety. Thanks again to Vigo Gardens for sponsoring this video, and check out their website in the link below. Happy gardening!